Very good morning, Tim Zimbabwe, Mamukase, 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 welcome to Africa and Beyond Television Network. And this morning, we need to take a look on very important matters. So, corruption in Zimbabwe is going to another levels, and uh, these levels are now dangerous levels. What we're watching on here says corruption is now so bad in Zimbabwe, such that Zimbabwe's first post colonial education minister, Dr. Zengai Mutumbuka, had his home worth 600,000 stolen from him. A criminal syndicate involving foresters and people working in the deeds office in Arari facilitated the theft of the property. A high court judge, Justice Webster Shinamora, ruled in favor of the fraudster. However, the judge resigned recently after a tribunal was set up to investigate his conduct in other matters. Dr. Mtumbuka, who lives in Washington, where he has worked as a World Bank executive, has now taken the case to the Supreme Court of Zimbabwe. This shows the dangers of a corrupt system aided by political elites. If it had been some small fish, the house would have been taken forever. Dr. Mtumbuka said that um, he had to speak to the president of Zimbabwe, Emerson Nangagwa, to warn him that the levels of corruption in Zimbabwe are now intolerable. This case means the Zimbabweans in diaspora are in danger of losing their properties without even knowing about it making Zimbabwe a dangerous place to buy property unless something drastic is done about publicly. This also makes it international capital can steal your property officials who are meant to protect your investments. So this is a very serious matter in Zimbabwe. That is the reason why a lot of people are afraid to register companies in Zimbabwe. You can register a company in Zimbabwe Tomorrow you just wake up, you no longer have that company. You register a property in Zimbabwe. Tomorrow you just wake up, you no longer have that property in Zimbabwe. So, is Zimbabwe safe for the people? No, it's no longer safe for the people. Because so many things are happening. If you go online, there are so many reports, various reports, different reports. Bishop of a certain church, he had to build that house, he bought this tent, built the house, and later on the bishop was sold the same stand, which was developed by somebody, which was bought by somebody, and told him a paper, and just came to evict the original owner of that home without consequence. And the man is stranded right now, together with the family. Just imagine, you have invested all you had in a, in a house, and somebody just comes and takes over. That is so, 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 so bad in Zimbabwe. So it's something which is difficult to understand. If you look at Tanga Kambani, you because you don't have control of that company. That is the reason why we've been calling for um, a digitized economy. Where I know that everything is digitized, at least we will reduce chances or our chances because somebody will actually know before you buy a property, you can actually confirm online to say, who is the owner of this property? Is this property owned or not? Then if you're dealing with different people, you can raise up your, uh, your eyes and say, why am I dealing with different people when actually there is somebody online with such, 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 such names? And when things happen, even if you're abroad, if you're not in Zimbabwe, you can actually check online and see what is happening to my property. But right now, with manual, we, we cannot, you cannot even check whether you still have your property or not. Because you'll be in London, you'll be in UK, you'll be wherever you are for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. And they'll know this person is not in Zimbabwe, is not around. And they'll say, what are the chances of this person to come back to Zimbabwe? And they'll do whatever they want to do. You will simply hear about the eviction of your children or your family from the house. If it is a stand, you simply hear Or you hear my, my, my relatives after it, ah, Murkuvaka, And you ask away. That is the time you start to realize with Wanyura. And by the time you start to engage lawyers in Zimbabwe and everyone in Zimbabwe, you would have lost everything. It would be very difficult for you to recover anything. So this is a very, very bad situation, and it pains the leader of ZANU PF uh, with a with a with a with a, uh, um, a black brush because 
Ndoga kuruwa cha rutunga mira nyika and the majority of the people who are corrupt are even from San PF. Urumende edi ya zarambava. Wanarufa nonga chingi tizo wanundu zarambava. So where do we go? Kana tadaro. This is the reason why we have been calling for a leadership renewal in Zimbabwe. A complete overhaul. So that we remove this corrupt system and we replace it with a better system. A better system which is going to prioritize governance, which is going to prioritize the people ahead of everything else. So it is what it is in Zimbabwe. I do not know what you think about these corrupt shenanigans, but let me uh, have, uh, or let me know your experiences about corruption so that we continue to have a conversation about this story.